So hey guys, um, thanks for tuning in again to the Welcome Home Stay Well series, where we aim to invite individuals, groups, and organizations to start powerful conversations around topics that can support positive well-being in our local community. So today um, I'm joined by my guest, Sean Jones, and we're gonna be exploring the question, how can the arts support our mental well-being? Sean is a professional artist who launched the Guernsey-based project Notes to Islanders in 2018. She studied a BA Honours degree in Fine Art at the University of Bournemouth and developed a passion for art that stemmed all the way back from the earlier years of her life where she found herself frequently drawing cartoons, images of people and things like this as, as far back as she can remember holding a pen. Um, throughout Sean's life, art found its place as a cathartic and uplifting tool that could help her to express herself while transversing her own journey through mental health difficulties. She was inspired by uplifting handwritten notes uh, that she encountered whilst walking in the Westminster area of London, uh, where she lived at the time, and growing up in Guernsey with her own experience of mental health difficulties, Sean was inspired to create a set of images of her own that had been exhibited publicly throughout the island. So her project has campaigned to break the stigma around mental health and to this day it is continually supported by Guernsey Mind and the Guernsey Arts Commission. So Sean, thank you very much for coming and joining me on the episode today. How are you doing? Yes, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm really well, thank you, and I'm glad to have you here. This is such a, an interesting <laughs> topic of conversation for me personally and I've you know, loved your artwork so much seeing it dotted around the island and particularly in town where I actually live. Um, so Excellent. I've really wanted to have this chat for a while. <laughs> <laughs> cool, that, that's good to hear. Excellent. That's awesome. So um, I thought, firstly, just to kick off, maybe you would like to tell me a little bit about yourself, um, you know, where your passion for art really came from and which experiences in particular led you on the path um, to start the Notes to Islanders project. Well, um, basically you covered quite a lot in the, the introduction, but um, yeah, so I went um, to the Arts University at Bournemouth where I um, studied fine art and, um, you know, that was for me one of the things that I've always wanted to do when I was um, small, you know, I just always wanted to be an artist and, um, you know, I know people when they grow up they want to be a doctor or they want to be a dentist or a firefighter or anything like that. I was like, yes, I want to be an artist and, you know, um, yeah, so that was just my passion and then when I was living in London, um, I was having a, a difficult time because I'd lost my father, unfortunately, to cancer a year before and I um, was walking around Westminster, like you commented, and I saw these handwritten notes that were like posted on like, uh, you know, public amenities, like electricity boxes and, and stuff like that. And they were um, done by this artist called Andy Leek and they were uh, notes to strangers. And I was thinking, you know, that would be great to bring something like that back to Guernsey, um, where obviously I'm from originally and, um, you know, help, like you say, break the stigma of mental health and basically just, you know, brighten up somebody's day. Um, so yeah, I approached Guernsey Mind and the Guernsey Arts Commission and they were like, yep, we're behind you. And now two years on, they're still going strong, which is great. <laughs> No, that's fantastic. You know, I've seen a lot of your artwork, as I said, around the town area and particularly around Mill Street and areas like that. And I must admit, it has brightened up my day, you know, usually on the way home from work in the evening. <laughs> that's good. Um, so, you know, I have to ask you, what was it um, particularly that, you know, seeing those projects around London, how did that make you feel? Or how did that kind of impact on your mental health? Um, it just made me feel like I wasn't alone because um, when you're having a, a dark day when you're like, you know, suffering from mental health difficulties, like if you're feeling depressed or anxious or anything like that, you know, you can look inwards and you can start to think, oh, you know, I'm the only person that's feeling like this. Everybody else has got it sorted. They're like all walking around looking like, you know, they know what they're doing with their life. And seeing those kind of, it broke my train of thought. Um, and it kind of, you know, if I was having a negative thought, it would replace it with a positive thought. And I thought, you know, this is this is great. This is um, such a 
like it's such an important thing to do just you know look at things from a different angle and yeah that's what inspired me to to bring it over to Guernsey but in a different style of actually making it into boards because I did that when I was doing my degree back in gosh a long time ago 2000 and 2007 <laughs> yeah wow that's fantastic that's brilliant and I must admit you know that fresh perspective that you talk about um so often when I've struggled with my own mental health difficulties and perhaps you can relate it is you know this cyclical thought patterns that we get you know embedded into and um, I must admit you know seeing your really uplifting you know comments and kind of statements across the island is you know I think it's a fantastic way to inspire people to think differently or take a different perspective on you know what's happening for them so yes. thanks so much for sharing that um you know I have to ask out of all of the the work that you've done in Jersey I've seen it dotted around a little bit so maybe would you explain a little bit about um some of the the parts of the project that have inspired you the most or um perhaps you know studios or galleries that you've most enjoyed working with or having your art kind of displayed in um well the first thing that sprung to mind when you um asked me that question was the the boards that i've got up um mill street like on the way to mansell street and um they basically are covering the empty shop fronts that were part of ideal furnishings and um i used to have a gallery up mill street um, it was called number 33 and you know the amount of people that would walk past and there'd be comments like saying oh it's such a shame but when you get up to this part of Mill Street it looks so kind of derelict and and everything so I was thinking I was like right okay we really need to brighten up this area so I worked alongside Guernsey Mind and for Seafront uh, for the Art Sunday um, last year we actually got these boards together and I uh, did positive quotes on them and the public you know all different age ranges from like children to um you know adults were painting on them even if they were like oh no I can't paint but you know anyone can paint as long as they've got a paintbrush um and some paint <laughs> and so yeah they um use bright bold colors and yeah totally brightened up brightened up the the top of Mansell Street there and I've heard some great comments back which is which is always great because you know sometimes people um that enjoy something you know they they enjoy it and they hold it in themselves but people who are more negative about stuff are more likely sometimes to to open up about their negative views on on something so yeah it was good to get the positive feedback um yeah just thinking about exhibitions and galleries that I've been to um like when I was living in London it was it was great because you know I lived just around the corner from um the Tate Britain which you know was amazing to have that like literally on my doorstep and to see like you know Turner Prize entries and stuff um and be able to go to like the Tate Modern and the Saatchi Gallery and also to like um you know less well-known galleries um you know that are just maybe starting up and everything um you know that was always really interesting because you get to meet the artist firsthand and have a good dialogue which is always um so important i think to get more of a background idea about the art and what it's about and um yeah yeah so that's that's where i go with that oh and i met gilbert and george they were like um you know inspirational artists for me and um yeah i met them in person also helped Andy Goldsworthy with his Audney Stones project um gosh that was quite a while ago as well and um yeah that was that was great working alongside him in Audney. That was fantastic and you know what I really enjoyed you saying there is that there's so much community in art and you know there are so many individual perspectives of a piece of art or a project but like you said it's that relationship and that story perhaps that you get to hear from the artists themselves or those people who work on the project that um, I imagine brings a deeper sense of meaning and depth. Um, oh gosh, definitely. Yeah, no, there's, um, you know, art is all around us everywhere. And, um, you know, I think during lockdown as well, um, people have become more aware of this fact, hopefully. And, you know, unfortunately the arts have been and are suffering, especially in the UK 
um, like theatres and galleries and everything. But I hear that the, the government is supporting them, which is so important, you know, art is just so important. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And I know it's been a, obviously a difficult time for many industries throughout lockdown. Um, but I have seen, you know, and personally, you know, in my own experience of going through lockdown, just become aware, like you said, of such a, a greater array of art um, locally, especially, you know, there was a lot of stuff like the rainbow concept and you know, community based art throughout lockdown. But it really opened my awareness to, you know, the fabulous artists we've got here and also the artists that we all have inside of us, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, it's um, so important to to not lose sight of that um, because I think, you know, when you're at school and if you're told, oh, you know, that fruit bowl doesn't look exactly like that fruit bowl, then people get put off like drawing and they think they're no good at it, even though it's their own interpretation of it, which is the most important thing. Even if it does look the furthest away from a fruit bowl that you could get, you know, it's still, um, yeah your interpretation and um, I work at the recovery and well-being at the moment like with, at the Oblins and um, I do art classes there and you know it's it's interesting hearing the service users say oh you know I'm, I'm no good at art like or whatever but I'm amazed like you know once they're actually there and you know focused like the stuff that they've been producing has been fantastic and um, you know we've got some work up at Candy Gardens at the moment to celebrate 75 years of liberation so that's um, fantastic no, that's amazing and uh, i really love that you know you're working in the community there and, and supporting people who like you said you know might consider themselves to be novice or incompetent when it comes to art and you know, just to draw that back to my own personal experience again you know i loved art at school but somewhere along that journey yeah, i you know decided because of a belief that i had that you know i've been informed by how someone else talked about my art that I wasn't an artist, you know, and I couldn't draw and, you know, would probably be better following a more intellectualized, you know, study path. And it's only in the last, you know, year or two really that and my confidence is still, you know, growing in that area, but I've been able to start expressing myself more creatively through that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, my mental health certainly, you know, like you said, focus is such a, a huge thing and, and being in that flow state. Um, and and kind of going through that and expressing yourself through that piece of art um, which mm. kind of leads me on to the next question around you know mental well-being how in particular has the arts helped your mental well-being um what during during my whole life or oh. during clock well i don't know you can give us a little bit of a story of you know how it's helped you throughout your journey or more recently or kind of whatever elements you'd love to talk about um well, yeah, art has always um, helped me um, in the form of escapism, I guess, you know, kind of takes me to a different place and is, um, you know, almost um, med meditational, is that the word? <laughs> um, you know, it's a sense of uh, meditation, I guess. And, um, you know, it's fantastic when you, like myself, I was quite shy growing up and um, you know I think it was great for me to almost give myself a voice um, which was you know something that came from inside um, you know and it was talking from my own personal experiences and um, you know um, a few years ago I did these paintings which were gay Disney paintings, like Disney characters kissing. And, you know, I exhibited them at the um, Art Sunday and this was 2012, so quite a while ago. And the feedback I got from them was just unbelievable. It was just, you know, people were offended, people were insulted, people were questioning why I did that at a family event and everything. And, you know, for me, that really got the ball rolling, though, in the sense of the LGBTQ community over here, in that, you know, it was, the awareness was raised that something needed to be done about it, you know, people needed to be more like, um, yeah, more understanding, and, um, yeah, I mean, there were great comments as well, like, um, I got a lot of support, and, um, 
yeah and that's for me is where art is so important to you know work as a platform for discussion and you know this is something that I'm wanting to do with the notes to islanders and you know be be inclusive to to lots of different people um such as like the most recent project I did with them was notes from islanders and that was during lockdown where I asked islanders to to give me quotes that would inspire them and inspire other people and that was a great selection of, of community quotes which like you say are dotted around the island so yeah no that's awesome and i think you know um i completely wholeheartedly agree you know it's such a, a great way to open topics of conversation sometimes difficult conversations for some people to have um, but it does, you know, give such a platform to discuss these things. And I really loved your notes from Islanders. Um, I've seen them around the island as well. Um, wh and where, where are kind of some of your most recent pieces? You know, where can people find those if they're out and about and they want to kind of tune in and check into your work? Um, there's, there's one just by the Rock Mount, which, mm. is, um, which is great. And they're basically... Um, just in various places throughout the island there's um Pembroke at the Pembroke kiosk um there and one at Farzon um at the kiosk down by there there's ones near the bathing pools there's one near Kobo there's one at Sunroy Park there's one on the way to Waitrose at the at the Rohays and Waitrose um down Admiral Park and um yeah near the ferry ring Oh, sorry. That's all right. Uh, are you still there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so many, many places. So people keep their eyes open and they'll be able to see them dotted almost around everywhere. I think um, the bathing pool was one in particular by the, the horseshoe pool. Um, yes. I think, yeah. I can't remember what the quote is, but I think it might be around the past only being a place you can... Um, What's that? I think it was a quote about the not living in the past. I can't remember exactly what it was. But it's yeah oh my gosh um uh oh my gosh i can't remember please edit this out <laughs> mm. no we won't uh, edit it. what we do is we'll um i'll get the image off you afterwards and we can actually upload it so the viewers can maybe see a couple of the images uh, yeah. and yeah inspire them to kind of keep their eye out for them around dotted around the place yeah no exactly oh god i know it so so well but uh, for reference not for residents yes i think that yes thank you <laughs> Great. yeah i remember it it's uh, it's quite <laughs> a few times for sure um so you know that leads me on to ask you know what does the future hold for the the notes to islanders project have you got any plans and kind of what's happening with sean jones art as you move forward <laughs> well um i'm going to be working on a possibly a new uh, one with audio. I'd like to, to do audio series of um, notes to and from Islanders. Um, that's just very much at the beginning stages though. I'm just planting the seeds there. And um, I'm hopefully going to be working alongside Guernsey Mine again for the up and coming Art Sunday on the 9th of August. Um, and again, creating some, some new boards that will be up somewhere in Guernsey, hand painted by by everybody that is willing to be involved. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, I love you drawing the community into that. Um, well, I look forward to, you know, personally supporting your work and I'm sure that through the Welcome Home platform, I mean, one of our aims is to, to share as many inspirational pieces of content or events and, and activities that are taking place around the island. So, you know, we'll do all that we can to help promote that work there um, and continue to share some of your images. Excellent. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very cool. much. Um, so just to kind of end our conversation today, I, I always kind of ask my guests for maybe one piece of information or advice. And I thought this time I might ask you, you know, for somebody who is struggling with their mental well-being and who perhaps thinks that the arts or some form of creative outlet could help to you know, support their journey, what piece of, a, of advice would you give them um, to kind of get started with that? Um, well, I basically say to them to to look online. Um, there's health connections can point people in the right direction um, with arts arts things. There's um, 
Art for Guernsey, um, which does different um, art classes and, and everything. And my main thing would be to just, you know, even if you're just by yourself and you've got a pencil and you just fancy doing some doodles, just to like get back into it. Just like give yourself a, a five minute break and then you'd be surprised at how much you would enjoy it and put no pressure on yourself. That's what I always say, especially to the service users and they laugh because you know, there's no pressure. But you know, that's the thing. Like I always put too much pressure on myself and I think that's where I go wrong. So, you know, it's not put too much pressure. And I think the most important thing is as well is to, to express yourself and to speak out about how you're feeling and speak to somebody that you trust. And, you know, if you do that through art, then, then that's a good way of doing it as well. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. Well, what I'll do is I'll add a few links to some of the things you mentioned. So we know the, the Guernsey Arts Commission is a local organisation and Health Connections is another great resource, like you said, online. Um, mm -hmm. Health Guernsey for connecting people to various resources that can support all areas of health and well-being, really. Um, so thank you very much for those pieces of advice and you know you heard Sean guys just get started whether it's five minutes <laughs> you know ten minutes uh, or an art class you know if it's something that you feel could personally help you um, to perhaps escape from the way that you're feeling or to you know express well, yourself more creatively. Sorry I just remembered as well Iris and Dora are back open now and they do different pottery sessions and art classes and stuff. I'm glad that you said that because I'd really like to go down there actually. I've been <laughs> meeting to for quite a while. Um, yes, yeah. So that's cool. awesome. what would you recommend doing down at Iris and Dora? Um, I know they have lots of different um pottery, um, which always looks fun. And um yeah, I'm not entirely sure about mm -hmm. the stuff they do. <laughs> All right, so the myriad of ways, you know, whether it's pottery, yeah. whether it's drawing, painting. And there's something yep. perhaps there for everybody. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Sean, for joining us on today's podcast. Um, no I'll, worries. I'll pop some, some links and resources where people can perhaps find you and maybe come and ask you any questions. We'll pop the, the notes to Islanders Instagram there and uh, link to your own page. And as always, guys, you can keep up to date with Welcome Home through our social media channels, our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter and our LinkedIn. Um, we release these Stay Well series podcasts every Friday at 8 a.m. Um, so I look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next one. Uh, Sean, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you. I look forward to seeing your artwork more around Guernsey and thank you for all the inspiring things that you do for the community. Oh, no worries. Thank you for, for asking me. <laughs> no worries. I'll see you soon, guys.